As of yesterday, we've hit it exactly one year of President Trump, so I wanted to take some time to talk about the good, the bad, and the ugly for number 45. But first, I want to give my honest opinion of President Trump as he stands right now. Many of you know that I've defined myself politically as a sort of pragmatic libertarian, the right wing in a lot of ways, but very aware of what reality is and what we need to do to achieve my goals in a realistic sense. And for that reason, I recognize that candidate Trump was the best possible bet that we have in securing our freedoms in the 2016 election. So we look at someone, we look at the rest of the conservatives, so-called, that were running that year. Ted Cruz, Marco Rubio, Jeb Bush, all completely worthless candidates. More establishment politics, neoconservatives, not going to do jack shit, they're going to slap fight with the Democrats for four to eight years, and it's not going to push our cause forward anymore. And then we look at the Democrat candidates, and uh, one of them is is an outright socialist, communist, collectivist, crazed Bernie Sanders. The other one is one of the most corrupt politicians that has ever existed, Hillary Clinton. And we, of course, should all know the party platform of the Democrats is fuck white people, fuck rich people, uh, and, and fuck the native people of America, essentially. Fuck the economy. We don't need any of that shit. So, of course, we should find an alternative to that. We cannot allow the Democrats to win uh, in 2016. And so, what options did we have as libertarians or people generally on the right, nationalists? Who did we have to vote for? Because someone has to win. And that's my contention when it comes to uh, p elections in... Um, democratic societies and in the West in general. Someone is going to win because that is the status quo. Someone is going to take control of the government. We might as well try and vote in someone who is going to protect our interests to the highest degree. And that was candidate Trump. That's why I'm perfectly fine with allowing him to win the presidency in 2016. And that's why I'm, I'm very glad that he did. Because if we compare his presidency to what could have been you know, who knows how badly our rights have been, have, might have been stripped away from us. Who knows how many refugees and migrants and uh, all this other shit would have happened under a democratic platform. So now let's talk the good. What has President Trump done that, that has been good for the United States? First and foremost, he's been pretty damn good at revitalizing the American economy. We've, we've already hit our expected 3% GDP growth, which is precisely where we need to be to really restore our economy to what it once was. And it's it's projected that we might even hit 4% economic growth here within the next couple of years, which would be fantastic. And of course, if you've been paying attention, the US stock market is up to extreme levels, never before seen. We're hitting records every single day, I believe. So that's good. It means we're going to get uh, an, an increase in investment into the country, uh, an increase in human capital and human investment. So these are all very positive markers that we're finally taking the economy and turning it around. And of course, uh, Trump's in, uh, insistence on cutting regulations is fantastic for restoring the economy. This is one of the main driving forces, I think, that allowing people to just go out there and produce, go out there and, and restore the free market is going to help us immensely. So for President Trump, I have to give him, as of right now, an A as far as the economy goes. Let's talk about some other good things. So one of the one of my favorite things about President Trump is he just it seems like he just doesn't give a fuck. You can say, you know, 40 chest and he's co coordinating all this stuff and there's stuff going on behind the scenes and eh, oh well. You know, we can't really prove any of that. It's fun to speculate, but in general it just appears he just doesn't give a fuck sometimes. Like his constant shit posting on Twitter is just amazing. I I love it. I I just I frankly I love it. As someone who grew up in the shit posting generation and as someone who enjoys it a lot, this is the, the perfect thing that we need in politics to shake up the establishment. I'm tired of these old dry bones, C-SPAN, old folks who don't even know what humor or fun is being in control of the country. Like Bush and Obama and Clinton, so dry and uninteresting as far as I'm concerned. But Trump is, he's, I mean, he's just a, he's a media troll. He, he's, it's fun to watch him act in, in the public space. And, it, cl and close ties to that, I think the, the whole Trump derangement syndrome, watching all of these you know, completely irrelevant, useless celebrities uh, just implode and go insane. Oh, it's, mm, ooh, it's icing on the fucking cake. It's so delicious. I love watching people melt down over Trump, mainly because I know, you know, a lot of their claims are just complete bullshit, but it, it's fun to watch them destroy themselves from the inside. 
it, it's so much fun. And all of the the liberals that are so pissed off about Trump and even even the neoconservative, the moralists, all these people. Oh, it's so great to watch them implode, whether or not I, I agree with their opinions or not. It's just fun to watch them explode over what is um, practically amounts to nothing. Another good thing that I think Trump has really shown is that he it honestly seems like he does care about the American people. Uh, he was perhaps it's just a facade, but his his mannerisms and the way that he interacts with the average everyday person, especially on the campaign trail. You know, he just had random people come up on stage. He'd point some out and say, hey, get that guy up here. I want to talk to him, you know, give him the mic. All the things that he's done for the economy. I mean, it really seems like, he, you know, fuck politics. Let's get the American people back to work and, and get them in a better position. And and ultimately, all of these good things, I think, is going to culminate in a, a decent presidency. It's a step in the right direction. The shift in the Overton window, of course, we're leaning more right. The youngest generation is very conservative. And it's going to help push the nationalist so-called quasi-libertarian movements forward in the long term by taking establishment power away from leftists, away from Marxists and, and communists and things like this, getting people more towards the, the more sane side of politics, should I say. So let's talk about some of the bad things. And these are things that I picked up on during the campaign trail and that I didn't explicitly say, oh, this is a deal broker for me. I can't support Trump or anything like this. No, these are just simple observations that I, I told people, hey, we need to be careful of these specific aspects of candidate Trump's platform. And the primary one of those was his connection, should I say, to political Zionism. Now, if you don't know what political Zionism is, I plan to make a video about it here when I can finally compile my little uh, project together. But in essence, it, it's a, a deep connection to the political establishment of Israel. And as you, you should know by now that Political Zionism is not in the best interest of Americans or Western European nations at all. It just isn't. But we'll get to that. So I wanted to be wary of any interactions that candidate Trump was going to have with the Zionist lobby. And I, I'm sure that this is one of the various lobbyist groups that allowed him to um, obtain the, the presidency. But I think that we should still be wary of his connections. This The whole serious strikes thing that happened this year... Uh, I believe it was back in March or April. Clearly, I don't want any more war in the Middle East. We should ally with Assad and Russia in defeating what is, well, the remnants of, of ISIS now. I probably should have included that in the good section. You know, of course, uh, ISIS is in full retreat, but that's mainly due to uh, Trump's non-interventionist policy in what Syria and Russia have been doing in, in the country. And, and the Kurds and all the, you know, the little rebel groups and all that. But we need to be wary of any warmongering in the Middle East by the neoconservatives and the Zionist lobby. And this is still one of my concerns right now. We need to pay close attention to Trump's relationship with Netanyahu and all of the uh, political Zionists. Of course, you know, he's, he's married into uh, a Zionist family. If you look into the ties of, of someone like Kushner and where their family stands on the whole uh, Israel question, it, it's pretty heavily pro-political Zionism. So we should be careful of that. And it's not necessarily a bad thing. It's just something that, you know, it's not perfect. It's not an ideal situation. But as I said before, it's better than the alternative of Hillary, let's nuke Iran and Russia Clinton. So we, we at least avoided that. Another bad thing that I have to talk to Trump on here is that his personal image, I know he doesn't, I, he probably doesn't care what people think of him, but he needs to understand that he is a representative of all of the right wing right now, according to Politi the political and media establishment. He he is the face of the right wing. You know he's called a, a white nationalist and and, and uh, Nazi and all these things. And he's representing all of us here on the the more right wing side. He needs to understand that. So anything that he does that disparages his image, it also discredits us here in in the right wing movement. And I think that's bad. I think this past year could have been handled a lot more, uh, perhaps maybe handled with a lot more dignity. As far as I'm concerned, the shit posting is great. The not caring attitude is great, but he needs to tone down some of the the goofs and gaffes uh, just a little bit in order to save face. Because you have to realize, to win this game of Monopoly, you have to play into the rules of the left establishment. You just have to. So you can't go around goofing and gaffing 100 percent of the time. You need to be serious every now and again. If we look back on things like shithole gate and and some of the comments that supposedly he said, it doesn't matter if he said them or not. But the amount of leakage that has come out of the administration needs to be handled. And 
just allowing for any of these things to take hold is going to be ammunition against any right wing politician or policy that happens in the future. So we need to tighten this down. It's not good for our image to allow these types of things to happen. So that's just a couple of the things that I think Trump needs to work on. But now let's talk about the ugly. These are things that need to be changed right now, today, it's Sunday, change them now because it is hurting us to such a great extent that th there needs to be some changes. And the first one is Jeff Sessions. Get that man out of there. I don't know what Trump's plan is, what usage he has for Sessions, but as of right now, he is hemorrhaging some of our support from the center left, the, the centrist movement, because of his stance on things like, like uh, federally uh, illegal uh, cannabis. For one, and, and I, I know I don't fucking care about drugs, uh, you know, I think it should just all be legal as far as I'm concerned, but it's it's all about image. Like I said, we're playing the leftist monopoly game. We have to play by the rules. It's all about image. And if Jeff, Jeff Sessions comes out and says, oh, we're going to attack medical marijuana, we're going to attack these states that have legal marijuana, it's like, dude, that is a, not a good image. That is not what the libertarian side stands for. That is not even what some of the nationalists stand for. They're perfectly fine with allowing things like this to exist in their states and it takes away a, a large section of people who don't give a shit about politics but care about uh their drug habits and so if you have just just this one person just just jeff sessions you know people extrapolate his opinion to the entirety of the administration if, if he says he's going to go after legal marijuana then all of a sudden you have a bunch of centrists who, millions of people by the way who don't normally care about politics but care about simple little things like that who are now suddenly going to switch sides and start supporting whatever progressive candidate the Democrats throw out, even regardless of politics. They're just, they have this one wedge issue that they care so much about that they're looking for an excuse to support one side over the other. So that needs to go. That is, that is extremely ugly. It's not good for our image and needs to change. And the last ugly thing I want to talk about, because we're, we're stretching our time here, is the whole Russiagate thing. Now I think it's all bullshit. You know, I, I can't, I can't wait for this release the memo thing to happen, but as far as I can tell, the whole thing is just bullshit. But it's, like I said, it's bad for our image that any of this was allowed to happen. It's so bad. Maybe it's 4D chess. Maybe, you know, release the memo comes out, Obama gets indicted, maybe he ends up in jail. That'd be great. But as far as I'm concerned, in the here and now and through this past year, that whole Russia thing has besmirched the administration very badly, regardless of if it's true. Even non-political people in my family have picked up on it and started saying bad things about Trump and completely, completely ignoring all of the good things that he done that he's done. It's more fuel for the shithead uh, mainstream media. I hate using that term, but it's I mean, it's true. You know, it's just more fuel for the CNNs and the NBCs and the Wall Street Journals and New York Times and things like that. It's just more fuel for their fire, for their garbage fire that is their supposed news reporting. You know, it, it's not good. It's ugly for our image and something needs to happen. I'm tired of these LARPers on Twitter who go on and on about, oh, you know, it's happening. It's it's happening, guys, really happening this time. I've got the emails. I've got the documents. You know, I'm going to re release them tomorrow at nine and it comes out and then it's a fucking nothing. It's just nothing. Stop leading this on. This investigation needs to end. We need to, to shatter it here and now before it gets any worse. Because honestly... I don't want to report on this shit. I don't want to have to listen to it. I don't want to have to go online and hear Russia this and Russia that and blah, 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 blah. I don't want I'm tired of fucking hearing about it. Just squash it now because if we let it fester anymore, it's just going to continue throughout the rest of the presidency. And it is harming his presidency. It's making people, like I said, with wedge issues, it's it's putting them on the, on the side of the left. If they're fence sitters, they're going to start leaning left because of this media smear. And so you need to combat it some way. You just need to, to nip it in the bud, get rid of it, do something. He has a lot of power. He can do something. I don't know what his grand strategy is, but something needs to happen. As an outsider, I implore you, please do something. Make a change because it's not good for our image. Anyway, that's been a, a quick synopsis of one year of Trump. It's been a lot of good and a little bit of bad, and I hope to see more good things from Trump in the future. So if you enjoyed watching, leave a like, subscribe, hit me up on Twitter, you know, so on and so forth. Thanks for watching.